guys, it's Amy. Welcome fellow truth seekers. Yes, I am here today with another expose and this one is actually on the plastics industry and why you should stop recycling, like right now. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into it and I'll show you what I found. So I was researching this uh, infrastructure project that is going on in Canton, which is where I live, uh, Canton, Ohio. And ultimately what I found was, I think the main reason for this infrastructure project, it was like a highway that was getting extended. Um, and it, like there was a part where it was a really windy road and they wanted a straight connector so that it would be easier for commerce and economic development. Well, what I really figured out was at the end of that highway extension was a petrochemical plant by Shell. Now, Shell is the oil and gas company, and this particular plant is it's like about northwest of Pittsburgh, but close to the Ohio border. The purpose of this plant is for, um, it's called, it's an ethane cracker plant. I'm going to read this. The plant separates ethane from natural gas to produce ethylene, the building block of plastics and other industrial products. It shouldn't surprise me that at the heart of all of the propaganda to recycle is the oil and gas industry because the more we feel like we are helping the planet by recycling, the more we will consume things that are in single use plastics. And that's exactly what all of the commercials and the advertisement for doing your part and reducing waste on the planet, like all of that is trying to get us to feel better about what we're doing when all the while they just want us to keep consuming, consuming, consuming. They really don't want, they really don't care if we recycle, they just want to make everyone feel better. Uh, one of the largest misinformation strategies is putting that chasing arrows symbol on things that we should be able to recycle without going down the rabbit hole of recycling. Um, let me just, throw a couple of facts at you. The heavier plastics that have what they call like a neck and shoulders are able to be recycled because they're a heavier plastic and they can be broken down into something else. Almost all plastic never disappears. It only breaks down. Kind of like energy isn't created nor destroyed. It simply changed its form. And that is exactly what happens with plastic. So when you have a plastic bag, like a shopping bag, you have something that is already too small of particles to actually be broken down to uh, become something else. So really all that can do is break into smaller pieces. Um, and we as humans are ingesting about a credit card full of plastic every year in those particulate pieces of plastic that are in our environment. I also read about a lawsuit between Kathleen Smith and Keurig. They ha Keurig advertises that their pods can be recycled when in fact over 60% of recycling, recycling facilities would not take them um, due to their small size. And in another statistic is that experts say that by 2050, the production of plastic will have tripled. So the fact, <laughs> the facts are out there, people. The oil and gas industry is thriving right now. It is not slowing down. And at any point because of climate change or the ESG, the environmental social governance rules that are being put out there, um, you know, none, 
nothing is slowing it down. In fact, it's speeding up. And so we need to do our part and not recycle. We're going to get rid of that paradigm that we grew up with, that we should recycle everything. But what we need to do is just look at other alternatives. So um, I did a blog post on this and I will link to it. Um, but, you know, one of my main <laughs> suggestions is become an entrepreneur and start a business that reuses post-consumer materials. Okay, like that's one of the biggest reasons that like glass, for instance, I know this is all about plastics, but I believe a third of it is recycled or reused in some capacity. And that is largely due to the lack of glass um, people that will manufacture and get down to that base glass material to resell then to bottle makers. So another way that we can just combat this is by either reusing, like I will let my kids go to Starbucks and Dunkin' and they bring their plastic cups home and I make them into little planters for my seeding um, area in the spring. And I also just wash them and reuse them at home. Um, oftentimes when I go out, um, you know, driving kids around or whatnot, I'll just fill up one of the plastic Dunkin' cups with water and that's what I take for the day. Another thing that we can do is we can, we can get local breweries. Um, there's a lot of like microbreweries around here. Like, and if they would consider taking back their bottles in an effort to reuse them, you know, we would cut down um, on in that industry. So, um, you know, I know that's kind of a lot, but I just wanted to come on and talk about that because I feel like anytime the trail leads to the oil and gas industry, we need to know about it. And so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this, this video. Um, be sure to subscribe to my channel, um, comment. This is obviously just my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion in the comments below. And um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next video. Always seek the truth in yourself and in the world. Bye for now.